In this episode of Cloud Performance Atlas, we take Compute Engine's disk options for a spin. Will their performance leave us dizzy? Stay tuned to find out. When we talk about the cloud, we tend to over-index on things like compute and network, because quite frankly, those are the things that the cloud can do, which the machine sitting under your desk can't. But with this focus, we tend to forget something disks. See, all that data you're processing has to go somewhere, and on Google Cloud Platform, choosing the right type of disk can make a huge difference in the performance of your application. As such, let's take a look at what type of disk options are available and what their performance looks like. In Google Cloud Platform, there are two main types of disk, uh, local SSDs and persistent disks. Local SSDs are pretty much what you'd expect, uh, drives that are physically attached to your virtual machine instance. So when your VM spins down, so does the data on the disk. Persistent disks, on the other hand, are network storage devices that act like a local storage device, with the upside being that they can persist even after your VM stops and can even be reattached to a new VM later. And on the persistent disk side, it's worth noting that there's two flavors, standard and SSD, which behave pretty much the same, except one is a lot faster than the other. Now, I understand that every application is different and has unique needs which might make you choose one of these options from the other, but from my perspective, I care about the best performance for the best price. To get a sense of this, a small benchmark test shows us how each of the disks performed, measuring number of I.O. operations per second per gigabyte of data. Uh, directly, we see a very clear trend. Uh, local SSDs outperform both types of persistent disks, which completely makes sense given that local SSDs are physically connected to the VM, so we should see better perf. This graph also shows us that as far as the persistent disks go, the SSD variant outperforms their standard counterparts quite easily. But this doesn't really tell the full story, which is why I like to break up the graph between throughput and IOPS to help figure out what disk is the best use case for what application scenario. Uh, for example, boot disk volumes and bulk storage are great matches for standard persistent disks uh, because they require very low IOPS and low throughput. Basically, you just want to occupy the cheapest, most reliable space available. Likewise, streaming IO works best with standard persistent disks since the cost per throughput is generally a little better. Now, relational databases tend to be more IOPS heavy, and while smaller instances might be able to run on standard PD, you really want your production deployments running on some sort of uh, SSD flavored disk. File servers mostly fall in the SSD PD camp since they can either be more streaming or more transactional, depending on what the clients are doing. And finally, high performance scratch disks tend to perform best on local SSD, which is also an ideal use case for things like Hadoop deployments. Now, it's worth reiterating that each of the three disk options have various types of configurations that can change how they perform under different workloads, which is why we've got more videos on the way. So make sure you check out the rest of the Cloud Performance Atlas content, because when it comes to performance, every millisecond counts.